couple of things I want to notice about this uh, man, this man, this lame man mentioned in Acts chapter 3. The Bible tells us in verse number 2 of Acts chapter 3 that he was lame from his mother's womb. The Bible tells us in verse number 2, it says, And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple. Now every time I read this, there's one thing that uh, comes to mind or comes to attention in verse 2. Uh, that word, they. I don't know their name. Right. I don't know who they were. That's right. I know who they weren't, Brother Powers. I know they weren't Peter. I know they weren't John. That's right. Maybe they weren't even apostles. But they've done something for God. That's right. Amen. They had a burden. They, uh, they knew uh, there was something going on at the temple. Yeah. Uh, they knew, uh, brother, that at the hour of prayer, uh, there was something there to offer this man. Uh, they knew that... Uh, you, you think about him for just a moment. The Bible said he was laid daily. The Bible said whom they, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple. I thought about Brother Adam that not only, not only do I not know their name, I don't really know who they are, but for the powers, they did not give up on this man. That's right. Every day, the Bible said, the Bible used the word daily. Daily this man was laid at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. I may jump ahead of myself, but I want to share something with you in chapter 4. Go well, ahead on, preacher. Chapter 4, verse 22. I don't know if you've thought about this in chapter 3. But the Bible said in chapter 4, verse 22, For the man was above 40 years old, of whom this miracle of healing was showed. Could I say to you that probably for 40 years, at least 40 years, this man could not walk. Right. For 40 years, somebody else carried him around. For 40 years, he couldn't help himself. For 40 years, the Bible said he was lame. He was helpless. There was nothing he could really do. He's begging at the gate of the temple. Right, right. That's right. The Bible said he's there asking alms of them that entered into the temple. He's basically there yelling help. He's basically there. Uh, I want to say to you, he was helpless for 40 years. I want to say to you, it seemed like he was hopeless for 40 right, years. Right. And I want to say to you, he was heartbroken for some 40 years. Yeah. Um, no doubt, days and nights he suffered. Days and nights he wondered um, what would happen to him. But I want to show you something. The Bible said in verse number 10 of chapter 3, I like this verse. It sticks out in my mind as probably the text verse for chapter 3. The Bible said in chapter 3, verse 10, and they knew that it was He. <laughs> yes. Why were they making a big deal about knowing Him? Because something happened to Him. That's right. Matter of fact, that's the terminology that's used. And they knew that it was He which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had, notice this, and that which had happened unto him. That's right. I want to preach on the thought, what happened to him? <laughs> what happened to him? Yeah. I want to tell you this. I, I, I will tell you what happened to him. He experienced a life-changing time at the temple. That's right. His life was changed. Brother Daniel, his life was made different. He was, he was revolutionized. <laughs> I'm talking about chapter 4 said he was over 40 years old. I'm telling you chapter 3 verse uh, number 2 said he was lame from his mother's womb. Right. So from birth to the time he's 40 years old, he's in this lame condition. For 40 years, he hey, can I say for 40 years he's in a mess? Yeah. Can I say for 40 years he's needing something? Can I say for 40 years, uh, friend, that in one in one service here at the temple, can I say that God done 
done something for him in one prayer meeting that he couldn't do for himself in That's 40 right. years. Right. I wonder what God wants to do for you tonight. <laughs> Woo! I wonder what God wants to do for you this evening. I wonder what God has done in your heart this week. Uh, I want to say to you that in just, uh, in just a few verses here, matter of fact, I thought about this. Chapter 3 and verse number 2 tells us that He's lame. Chapter 3 verse 2 tells us He's lame. Chapter 3 verse 8 tells us He's leaping. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Powers, from verse 2 to verse yes, 8, right. I don't believe there's a whole lot of time in between. No. I'm telling you, friend, that uh, in just a few minutes, just a few minutes uh, around the church house, just a few minutes around the temple of God, absolutely changed his life. Right. I'm telling you, God done more for him in one service than he could do for himself in 40 years. I want to tell you, one revival meeting done more for him than dry out clinics, do a dose of new bears, uh, New Year's resolutions. Probably for 40 years he made New Year's resolutions. I'm going to get back on these feet. I'm going to walk this year. Maybe for 40 years he said, I'm going to dry out. I'm going to get this condition fixed. I'm going to get cleaned up. How, how many times in a 40 year period did he turn over a new leaf and say it's going to be different now? But he found himself in that same condition. Right. For 40 some odd years he never found help. But thank God somebody somewhere had a burden for him. Thank God somebody somewhere brought him down That's to the right. temple and laid him there every day. And I thank God, it. hey, thank friend, thank God because he laid there every day. Uh, friend, one day he had an encounter uh, with Peter and John, and all they could really do was point him uh, to somebody else That's that could right. help him. But thank God, Peter and John, I, I believe when right. they said to him, Look on us, I believe they were saying to him, I know a man who can. I believe they're saying to him, I know somebody uh, that can get you up. I know somebody uh, that can get you out. I know somebody uh, that can turn you around. I know somebody. Uh, listen, the Bible tells us in verse number 2 that he's begging. The Bible said in verse number 2 that he's there asking alms. But the Bible said in verse number 8 he's praising. That's right. In verse 2, he's begging. In verse 8, he's praising. I want to ask you what happened to him between verse 2 and verse 8. Well, the same thing that happened to him uh, needs to happen to a lot of our church members, needs to happen to a lot of our, our folks in our churches, friend. The reason why he went from begging to praising the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Can I tell you this? That's what happened. Jesus happened to him. That's right. <laughs> Woo! Can I tell you this? The power of God happened to him. That's right, preacher. I'm talking about the power of God happened to him. I'm talking about we've got a lot of people in our churches, friend. Uh, they know the songs in the red back hymnal. They can quote the 23rd Psalm. They know what it is to go to Sunday school. They know what it is to come on Sunday and come on Wednesday night. They don't even know what it is to come on a revival night. But what's missing in their life, that thing under the crevices of their heart that they really need, Jesus has never happened to them. That's right. Amen. He's never happened to them. Churches happen to them. Religions happen to them. But the Lord Jesus Christ, He and His power never happened to them. I'll tell you this. If the power of God ever happens to you, you won't be saved. You know that. By the way, if the power of God uh, ever happens to you, you'll never get over what God done for you. Hey, By the way, here's a man that was begging at the gate of the temple, and when Jesus happened to him, and when the power of God happened to him, and when the presence of God happened to him, and when God moved on him, and when God lifted him up, the Bible said that man followed Peter, that man followed John, he followed them into the temple, and the Bible said as soon as he got there, he he began to walk. He began to lead. Oh, yeah. He began That's to right. praise God. I'll tell you what That's happened right. to him on the inside. It showed up on the outside. It showed up all over him. Hey, you know what? Jesus showed up all over him. Jesus happened to him. That's right. Hey, man. I want to ask you something. When's the last time Jesus showed up all over you? That's good. <laughs> Woo! I want to ask you something. When's the last time you got full of God? You got full of the Holy Ghost? You got beside yourself because Jesus happened to you. It's good. What happened to him? Let's look at these verses. 
Number one, I want to say the preacher happened to him. <laughs> the Bible said in verse 1, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. I wonder if this just happens, happens that, Brother Powers, that God chooses to change His life at a time that the man of God's around. That's right. I want to tell you, hey, you know where He found His help? He found His help from Peter when Peter said, look on us. He found His help when Peter said in verse number 6, then said Peter, then Peter said, uh, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. That's right. He got some help under preaching. That's right. He got some help when Peter said, look on us. He got some help when Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's right, preacher. He got some help around the man of God. He got some help around the preacher. I want to tell you something. There's been a good number of young people, young children, young adults in this hell, meeting hell, this hell, week. Hell. And I want to tell you one thing. If you take one thing out of this service tonight, if you take one thing out of this meeting this week, you take this one thing with you that God will change your life, that God will do something in your life, you. that God will help you, I that know. God will lift you yes, up, yes. that God will change you, that God will allow you to experience His power. But it happens in an atmosphere where the man of God is. That's right, man. Amen. Hallelujah. This Bible said, uh, just for a good reference verse, it said in 1 Corinthians 1, 21, it said, For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Right. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 1 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. That's right. He got help where Peter and John was. Listen, somebody uh, somebody picked him up and somebody labored and sweat over him and bled over him. And somebody cared about him. And somebody had a burden for him. And somebody showed some compassion toward him. And they got him down there to that temple. And thank God they got him there when the preacher was there. They got him there when the man of God could That's help right. him. Amen. Amen. Brother John, you know how the preacher helped him? The preacher led him in the right direction. That's right now. The man of God led him in the right direction. Oh, I want to tell you, friend, this is Peter and John. These are the apostles of the Lord. These are choice men of God. These are the men that God are using. And thank God when they began to speak, this man's life's already in a mess. Right, right. He don't need right. worse problems. That's right. He sure for did. forty hey, for forty years he couldn't solve his problem. The oh, last thing oh. he needed was a lie. The last thing he needed was heresy. The last thing he needed was bad doctrine. The last thing he needed uh, was to be led in a sour direction. That's but right. thank God, providentially, in the will of God, somebody got him to a real temple. That's right. By the way, temples are a dime a dozen, but you have to look to and be led by God to find a real temple. That's right. Thank God they got into a real temple where there was a real preacher with a real call from God and a real burden and a real God-given direction. Thank God Peter was able to say, look on us. That's right. Good. You know, this thing isn't completely about, this thing's not about man, it's about God, but it's somewhat about man. Right. It's somewhat about man because God uses people as His vessel. Thank, thank God. God. Uh, thank God this man was clean. Uh, this man was called. This man was chosen. This man was consecrated. This man was convicted. This man was able to say, Look on us. Come go our way. Look on us. We right. know where help is. Uh, look on us. We know what God I, I can do for you. Look on us. We that's know right. uh, where the place is. Where you'll find help for your soul. You can get out there in your life condition. You don't have to lay there another day and beg for mercy. God's got something for you. God's got a work He wants to do for you. God said, hey, by the way tonight, friend, God, He'll get you up. He'll get you out. He'll lift you up. And you'll get somewhere where the man of God is. That's right. Amen. You know that's right, son. Amen. Thank God for the man of God. Thank God somebody was able to say, 
Look, Look on, on us. us. <laughs> Thank God somebody's able to call out the name Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And by the way, a real man of God will always point you to Jesus. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just dropped by to tell you tonight, you better not take preaching lightly. better not take the preacher for granted. You better not take the temple of God lightly. Right. You better not take the temple of God for granted. I say you better not take the preacher lightly. You better not take the pastor lightly. You better not take the temple of God lightly. He might have the word for your son. You might have the word for your daughter. You might have the word for your family. Who are you connected to? Is it your son that's lame? Is it your grandchildren that are lame? Is it your daughter that's lame? Is it your husband that's lame? Who's been down 40 years? Who needs something from God? Who needs something, friend, in your family? Connected that's right. to you that the man of God can say, Look on us and Jesus will change you. That's right. Hallelujah. I want to mention this. Not only did the preacher happen to him, but I'll tell you prayer happened to him. That's right. God, amen. It's our prayer. The Bible tells us in verse number 1, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. I want to just throw this out right quick too. I didn't have this really in my outline of it, but I want to throw it out. Throw it out. Brother Powers, not only did the preacher happen to him, and did prayer happen to him, and I will tell you the presence of God's people happened to him. That's right. Because the Bible said in verse number one, how about them three words went up together? That's right. Went up together. And Brother Adam quoted the verse earlier. The Bible said in Matthew 18 20, Jesus said, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. This verse, this chapter only begins to call out two names. It said, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. I don't know who else is there praying. I know there's a lame man laid outside, the, outside the temple that needs help from God. I, I know, thank God, somebody else is unnamed, had a burden for him, and brought him there. But thank God among those three, yes, yes. thank God among those three, right. the presence of God happened to him. The presence of the people of yes, God yes. happened to him. I want to tell you, little is much when God is in. I want to tell you, God don't have to have a big crowd. God, God used two people here. There's two that know God. There's one man that can't help himself. And in the midst of their problem, in the midst of their pain, thank God the Lord Jesus stepped in the middle and That's changed right. lives. I got news for you. He's still changing lives. That's right. Amen. Hey, man, he's still changing lives. I drove, by, I drove by a place the other day and it said, going out of business sale. I said, I'm glad God didn't have one of them. Never. Amen. Never. <laughs> Never. Yeah, he's not having a going out of business sale. He's still on the throne. He's still in the revival business. He, his power's not diminished. He's not changed. He's able to lift you up. Have you ever experienced the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah. I'm talking about experiencing the power of God. I'm talking about your life was changed. I'm talking about you's resurrected. I'm talking about you never been the same since that wonderful day. That time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Prayer happened to him. The Bible said he went up to the temple. The hour of prayer, verse 1, be in the ninth hour. <clears throat> this, the Bible says this in um, Mark 11. I want to read this to you and move along. Prayer happened to him. You know, we've prayed a lot here this week and God's moved. And I want you to know that God honors prayer. I believe the Bible said in Mark 11, verse number 22, it said, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. The Bible said in verse number 24 of Mark 11, it said, Therefore I say unto you, what things have you desire when you pray? 
believe that you receive them and you shall have them. I thought about that verse. I thought about James 5.16. You have uh, where the Bible talks about uh, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I thought about Jeremiah 33 verse 3 where the Bible said, I'll call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I thought about that mountain of Mark chapter 11 where the Bible said that through faith God can move mountains. You talk about 40 years in a lame condition. You talk about 40 years without help and without hope. Hey, you talk about 40 years and no change. 40 years and no relief. That's a mountain. That man had a mountain of hindrance. He had a mountain of difficulty. He had a mountain of discouragement. He had a mountain of despair that sat there unmovable for some 40 years. But That's God, right. in His power and His mercy, in one, one trip down there to the temple, absolutely at the hour of prayer, at the hour of preaching, at the hour of the presence of the people of God absolutely changed his life. That's right. That's right. We notice the prayer, the preacher. <coughs> I'll tell you something. I believe with all my heart, there's no substitute for, the, for, for prayer. That's right. No, it's no substitute. Prayer is the key that unlocks the door to miracles. Uh, the power of God is connected to prayer. You know, Brother um, Adam and I were talking this week. If there's one thing we've learned from watching Brother Allen, it's that you can't pray too much. can't be too sensitive to the Holy Ghost of God. I'm talking about through prayer, through the preacher, through the presence of the people of God, this man had a life-changing experience. Notice verse 2 and 3. Let's notice his problem. We've said a little bit about it. Verse 2 said, He was lame from his mother's womb. Verse 2 said he was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. The Bible said in verse 2, he was there to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. The Bible said in verse 3, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asking alms. We see his problem. His problem was from his birth. But I want to move on to verse 4 and talk about these possibilities. I do want to throw this out, talking about his problem, make an application. His problem was from his mother's womb. Thank you, dear brother. That's right. His problem was from his mother's womb. And I want to say tonight, friend, I thought about Romans 5 and 12, wherefore by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. We're born a sinner. That's right. Romans 3.10, as it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I mean, from birth we're lame. That's right. Uh, the natural man, he receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness unto him, but neither can he. He can't know them because they're spiritually discerned. Right, preacher. I tell you, he needed something from God from the time he was born. Right, right. I want to tell you something tonight. We all need something from God. Hey, hey. Right. We all need a touch from God. We need some help from God. I mean, the Bible said that God lifted, uh, lifted this man up. And I ask our own congregation, friend, in preaching this message: Has God ever lifted you up? I'm talking about. Have you ever experienced something from God? Come on, preacher. Come on. A lot of people said prayers. A lot of people have gotten in a ritual, gotten in a routine. A lot of people, friend, have, have gotten religious and gotten churchy. Come on now. A lot of people have gotten in a ritual. A lot of people know what it is to go through a program, but they know nothing about the power of God. Right, right. A lot of people know a little something about theology, but they know absolutely nothing about neology. A lot of people know what a program is. But there, they know nothing about the power of God. We need a, a revival. We need an awakening in our country of the old time power of God. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. All my heart tonight. Brother Daniel, this man knew a little something about the temple. He knew a little something about in all those years of laying there. The Bible said he was laid daily there. Right. Laying there every day, I'm sure he learned a little something about a ritual. Probably knew a few names. Probably knew a few frequent visitors. But there came a day. I want to. I hope. I hope God let me preach right here. There came a day that he experienced something. Yeah. Now. There came a day that God Almighty touched him. That's right. There came a day that Jesus Christ of Nazareth affected him like never before. I mean like never before. He was affected like never before. That's right. 
temporary check. Anything like that ever happened to you? Can you take me to a time and a place in your life where you experience Listen something now. from God? I'm, I'm telling you, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. This thing's real. I like what the preacher said tonight. It won't just it won't just stir you. It'll change you. A lot of people have been stirred, but never been changed. That's exactly right. A lot of people have been convicted. A lot of people have been stirred. A lot of people have gotten concerned. That's right. But when the fire got burning real hot around their ankles and the fire got to burning real hot around their knees and God began to point out things in their life and God began to speak to them and God began to move on them rather than being changed, they let it stop at conviction and stirring. That's right. You know you're right. Well, I'm telling you, God wants to change you. Tell you this, believe it with all my heart. Same person ever gets filled with the Holy Ghost one time, you'll never get over it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you won't you won't settle, friend. I'm for average when you know what it is to be around power. Hey, man. Right. Hey, you won't want the refrigerator, you want the fire. That's right. When you get around the fire, <laughs> thank God you'll have a hard time. Going back to the refrigerator. Hey, man, God, right there. You want the fire. Hallelujah. I heard Brother Johnny Simpson make this statement. He said, I was born in the fire and can't live in the smoke. Hey, man. Amen. Believe it with all my heart. Thank God for the fire. Let's look at these possibilities. Boy, thank God for the fire. The Bible said in verse 4, Peter fastening his eyes on him with John said, Number one, he said, look on us. The Bible said in verse 5, and he gave heed unto them. That's why he got some help. Tell verse 5, the reason, you know, I was preaching last night and talking about the human element of the work of God. Talking about if there's going to be a conversion, there's got to be a human call. If there's, if there's going to be cleansing, there's got to be a human confession. Amen. There's got to be a confession for cleansing. Right. If, if we're going to lose our cares, if God's going to help us in cares, we've got to be willing to cast them on Him. Hey, man. Yeah. Well, this man right here, Brother Adam, the Bible said in verse 5, and he gave heed unto them. Yeah. Boy, he wasn't puffed up in pride. He wasn't saying, I, he, his attitude was not, I don't need you. His attitude was, whatever you can do for me, I need it. Listen now. Yeah. The Bible said, he, the Bible said in verse 5, and he gave heed unto them, look at this, expecting to receive something of them. He had to receive something in them. Right. Something different about them boys. Brother Daniel, the Bible didn't say right there expecting to walk. Expecting to shout. The Bible said just expecting to receive something. Something. Hey, friend, I'm telling you, he he'll do exceedingly he above above something. That's right. Something. God, do something for me. That's good. God, help me in some way. Give me. Listen, I've been laying here 40 years. I've been helpless 40 years. I've been hopeless 40 years. I've been heartbroken 40 years. Something. Just do something. Right. What a day. Hallelujah. Write me a new wheelchair. Wonder. Wonder how many of you come, wonder how many of you come in here tonight and say, God, just do something. Do something. Wonder how many of us would come in here tonight and say, God, do just do something in my church. God, just do something in my life. God, do something in my children. There you go. God, do something in my husband. Do something in my wife. Do something in my children. God, do something in my church. God, do something in my life. God, just do something. Boy, if we had that desire tonight. I'm going to tell you, the Bible said, the Bible said in verse 5, he was expecting to receive something. That's good. That's good. He was expecting something. That's good. What kind of expectation tonight do you have of God? That's a good question. What kind of expectation do you have of the man of God?
Can I tell you again, we have our routine and we have our program and many times our expectation stops with our with our fleshly vision of our program and our fleshly vision of what we see. But I tell you, I wish God would give us an expectation of not flesh, how but an expectation of faith that would go beyond our flesh. I wish God would give us an expectation that would exceed what we can see. That can exceed, hey, that would exceed what's happened in days gone by that would exceed what we've figured out with our pen and paper and what we've figured out with our calculator. Listen, what kind of expectation do you have tonight? Oh, for your home, oh, for yourself, for your family, for your church. Where's your expectation with God? Amen. Oh, the possibilities tonight are great. <laughs> yeah. The possibilities are great. Yes, sir. Let me give you God's possibility and move along. I believe we find the possibility of God in Ephesians 3, verse 20. Now unto Him that is able to do... Well, this is one of my favorite verses in all the Word of God. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Now you've heard Ephesians 3, 20 many times. It's already highlighted in your King James Bible. But when's the last time it weighed on you? When's the last time you prayed over that verse? When's the last time you meditated on the God of Matthew 28, 18 where the Bible said, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me right. in heaven and earth. When's the last time you took a moment and you stopped for a moment and you waited for a moment and it really dawned on you that God is able to do beyond anything hey, you you could ever ask or you could ever think. What's good? According to his power. Amen. So many times we think about what we've seen before. Right. So many times we base our expectation on what we've seen before. So many times we base our expectation on what we see right now. You know something? Many times we base our expectation on right now. We base our expectation on not faith, but how we feel. We base our expectation on not what God can do, but what we think people are going to do. We base our expectation on not what God can do, but what we feel like we've done and what we've done in the past. We've got to get past what we can do. Right. We've got to get past what we've done. We've got to get past what we think people are going to do. And we've got to begin to walk and believe and trust at what God's going to do. That's right. Hey, hey. Oh, God help us. You better believe it. God help us to get there. Only the Holy Ghost to get us there. I believe that. <coughs> Brother Steve, here's a man people couldn't help. I believe they've done everything. Brother Adam, I believe they've done everything they could. I believe they've done everything they could, Brother Johnny. And finally they got in the place and said, we don't know what else we can do. We're, we're running out of gas. All we're going to do is take it down there and lay at that temple and see if somebody there can help you. That's right. Because we can't do anything with you. Because you're lame. Because you've been laying there. Because you had not changed for 40 years. Did you know something can be in a rut for 40 years and God can revive it? That's right. Amen. That's good. Lazarus got in the rut for about three days and got to stinking. But did you know when it stinks and it hurts and when it's even dead, God can revive it and change it and get it up. That's right. right. That's good. I mean, whoo! Goes right there. That's it, son. <laughs> I don't know, friend. All I know is believe God. That's right. All I know is this Bible said for 40 years, this man is, I mean, can you think of anything, Brother Daniel, much more discouraging than being in your right mind, knowing what's going on around you, knowing what you need, and being crippled and not knowing how to fix it. It's pretty discouraging. Did you know when your discouragement is at your wit sin. What you better do is get where they're praying, get where they're preaching, get where there's the people that believe God, 
And did you know when 40 years passes by and it seems like the same ruts got you in the same hole, got you in the same jam, got you in the same dry spot? Did you know when it seems like nothing's happening, you may one day, hey, this man one day got in one service, got around one church, got around one preacher. He had the one instance in his life where God changed his life. That's good. good. I guarantee you, if I got Brother Steve Powers to testify, Brother Adam Humphreys, myself, Brother John Humphreys back here on the back row, these preachers, many of these saints of God in this place, my wife, guarantee you, Sister Amanda back there, there's people that can testify in this building that there have been times in their life that they went to the temple of God and they were the same for a long time. But brother, there were times in their life they entered into God's temple and they experienced life-changing services. Oh, that's right. Know that right now. Amen. <laughs> I still believe God. I still believe God. I'm not living and dying. Thank God for the past victories. Thank God for memory lane. I don't ever forget where Thank God God. brought me from. Whoa, glory. I, I wouldn't be here tonight. But I've got news for you. The same God of yesterday. The same God of yesteryear. The same God that changed you before. I, I could take you tonight and do something in your life greater than what's ever been done for you. By the help and the touch and the power of God. I'm talking about experiencing God. That's right. How bad do you want him tonight? You no, know you're right, son. How bad do you want him? Let me tell you something. Son, that's preaching. We think experiencing God. I want him. We think experiencing God is some Sunday school, some Sunday school material we pass out. You're experiencing God. <laughs> Here we think experiencing God is, but Daniel, we think it's a little magazine that we hand out to three or four year olds. Here, we'll experience God. Read this little magazine. You're crippled through out for crutches. They gave me a little Experience in God magazine when I first got saved at Liberal Church and then I read verses in it. Experience in God. I won't tell you what Experience in God is. I won't tell you what Experience in God is. Experience in God is getting up out of your pew. Experience in God is waving a white flag of surrender to everything in your That's life right. but God Almighty. Experience in God is crawling an altar somewhere. Experience in God is saying, Lord, would you move one more time? Would you come down one more time? Would you touch me one more time? Experience in God is getting hungry. Experience in God is saying, look on us. We don't have silver and gold, but Jesus will do something for you Amen. that nobody else can. That's right, son. I'd rather have Jesus. I'm going to tell you what I like about church. When you come in and sit down, you look at an altar. Yes. That's where you experience God. I'm going to tell you what I like about a church. Even if you're sitting way in the back, you're just a few steps away from getting right with God and getting all you need from God. Amen. I'm going to tell you what I like about church. If it's a real church, you got a King James Bible in your lap. You're sitting here looking at an altar. You're just a few steps away from experiencing God, experiencing His power, being stirred, being changed, being revived, being saved, whatever you need. I tell you, you came to the right place to experience a touch from the glory world. If you just yield to God, if you just expect to receive something, if you just draw down a God, He will draw down you. He'll change you. You, he'll touch you. He'll give you something you'll never get over. We see these possibilities. Let's notice the power in verse 6 and 7. The Bible said in Acts 3 verse 6, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. That's one. The name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Thank God for that Sunday morning. It was November the 6th, 1994. Just a teenager lost on my way to hell. That God, Brother Daniel, lifted me up. And many times since that morning of salvation, thank God for that initial lifting up salvation. But I want to tell you, in service, 
in separation, in sanctification, in, ser in serving God, in satisfaction tonight. He's lifted me up many times since. Right. And whatever you need tonight, He's able to lift you up. We see the power of God change your life. Hey. I want to say a couple things about this. We're coming to a close. The Bible said in chapter 4, verse number 22, the Bible tells us for 40 years he was in this condition of helplessness. But the Bible tells us in verse number 14 of chapter number 4, the Bible said, And beholding the man which was healed, standing, uh, standing with them, they could say nothing against it. The Bible said in verse number 16 of chapter 4 that what had happened to this man was a notable miracle. But notice this in, notice this in verse number 12 of chapter 3. Let's, let me show you this. You need to see this. Chapter 3, verse 12. It said, And when Peter saw it, what, what Peter saw was the people greatly wandering in verse 11. At the man walking and leaping and praising God in verse 8 and 9. The Bible said in verse 11, these people were... These people were what were greatly wandering, and they were about to give Peter and John credit for what's happened in this man's life. And we're talking about the power of God in chapter three, verse twelve. It said, "And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, You men of Israel, why marvel ye at this, and why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness yeah. Yeah. we made this man to walk?" Right. He said in verse 13, The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified His Son Jesus, whom He delivered up and denied Him in the presence of Pilate, when He was determined to let Him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murder to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life. Notice what the Bible said, Whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Look at verse 16. And His name, the Bible said in verse 16, and His name through faith in His name. His name through faith in His name hath made this man strong. Whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by Him hath given Him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. I like the statement in verse 12. The Bible said, by our own power. Peter said, you think by our, by our own power or holiness we made this man to walk. Peter, these people... The people that saw what happened to this man, Brother Steve, the people that saw the change in this man's life. And by the way, when God, when you experience Jesus Christ, when you experience the power of God, when the power of God changes your life, it'll show up and others will recognize it. You better believe it. Others recognize the difference in this man's life, Brother Daniel. And when they when, when this man went from begging to shouting. When this man went from being lame to walking and leaping, the Bible said the people were greatly wondering at what happened to him. And they knew Peter and John were connected to what happened to him. That's and so right. they're about to begin to you know, give Peter and John the glory. It's what they were about to do. But Peter said to them, it wasn't our own power. That's right. It was not our own holiness. Right. What happened to this man went beyond Peter. What happened to this man went beyond John. Right. What happened to this man went beyond the people that brought him on a stretcher to the temple. What happened to this man uh, went beyond what human eye could see. But this man literally experienced the holiness and the power of God. And friend, he was so different. It shocked his friends and family. It right. shocked his community. Right. right. When's the last time the power of God so affected you it shocked your friends and family? There you go. <laughs> there you go. I, I mean, it shocked your community. And people said, what happened to him? There you go. The Bible said in verse number 10, they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had, I like that word, happened unto him. Right. Something happened to him. That's right, son. Something there. happened to him. I mean, he wasn't the same man. By the way, he wasn't living the same way. Right. He went from begging to shouting. He went from laying there to walking and leaping. He went from laying outside to shouting inside. 
<laughs> he went from begging outside to praising inside. He went from begging to giving. He went from being on the outside to participate. He got off, hey, hey friend, he got off the sidelines and got in the ball game. Right. He went from spectating to participating. By the way, when you experience the power of God, you'll go from spectating to participating. You'll go from laying down to getting involved. That's right. That's exactly right. You'll, get, you, you'll go from laying out to getting in the best way you can. And the Bible said when he went in, he followed Peter and John. Right. He followed Peter and John to the temple, Brother Powers. Right. And I'm going to tell you something else. When the power of God affects your life and the power of God you changes know. your life, you'll begin to love and appreciate and follow the man of God. That's right. right. Yeah. Who's, who did he follow to the temple? Peter and John. Why did he follow them? Not because they'd saved him. Not because their power changed him. But because God used them. And because he's the one that said, look on us. We know somebody that can help you. And he stayed. Hey, he got some good doctrine from them. He got some good preaching from them. He got some good teaching from them. He got a good example from them. He found a faith he could follow from them. And brother, he hooked up where his help come from. Hey, man. That's right, man. Some of you young people been getting in the offer this week. Thank God for you. Stay with your help and stay. Hey, get plugged in and turned on. The work's coming. That's exactly right. Say that again. And though, hey, some folks may call you a nut, just tell them that's fine. But I'm screwed on to the right bowl. Yeah. <laughs> they may call you a nut, brother. You're screwed on the right bowl. You stay plugged in. You stay turned on to the man of God, the house of God, the place of God, the people of God, the power of God, the preaching of God. Don't you ever forget. Don't you ever get over. Don't you ever get away from where you find your help from God. That's right, son. Amen. Amen. Don't ever get over it. Good, good preaching. Good preaching. Notice his praise in verse 8. The Bible said he was lifted up in verse 7 by the power of God. The Bible said in verse 8, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered into the temple. There you go. Walking and leaping and praising God. He'd have shook up most Baptist churches, wouldn't he? Yeah, it wasn't He'd have scared them to death. He'd have That'll shook them up. up. That'd have messed them up. Walking and leaping and praising God, verse 9. And all the people. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Brother Daniel, can you believe that he got so right with God and so full of God and so full of the Holy Ghost that he's walking and praising, leaping and praising God and all the people saw him and he still didn't stop and still didn't care and still didn't get embarrassed. <laughs> hey, young person, can you believe this 40-year-old man got so full of God and full of the Holy Ghost and God got so far so on fire for God, he wasn't ashamed to worship. He wasn't ashamed to praise. He wasn't ashamed to get full of God. He wasn't ashamed to shout. He wasn't ashamed to run the aisles. He wasn't ashamed to jump up and down. He wasn't ashamed to give God all the glory. He wasn't ashamed. He wasn't ashamed to get hooked on old time power. He wasn't ashamed to get under the spout where the glory comes out. He wasn't ashamed to go all the way with God. He wasn't ashamed to be found shouting and praising God on the Friday night. He wasn't ashamed to be identified with Peter and John. He wasn't ashamed to be full. Oh God. Right. He got the right yes, yes. He just didn't even care anymore. That's right. Amen. I mean, he got so full of God, he didn't care. Amen. That's Amen. right, man. I like it. <laughs> Amen. When's the last time you got so hooked on the power of God you just stopped even caring what people thought? Hallelujah. Amen. When's the last time you saw somebody? I'm talking about running. I'm talking about running the aisles in church. Running the aisles in church. Asleep. I'm talking about. I'm talking about walking, leaping, and praising God. Hallelujah. Most times they're sleeping, not leaping. Most funeral homes have more life than the average Baptist church. Hey, man, right there. Most funeral homes. Quietest place you'll ever be. There's more life in most funeral homes than the average church, and we say we're glory bound with a hammer down. What yeah. about that? I'm telling you, friend. We're missing it. Why? Why was he? 
I, I want to investigate something for just a second. Why is he shouting? Why is he leaping? Why is he walking and jumping up and down, Brother Bill? Is it just to be seen? Is it just to make some noise? I'm going to tell you what, it wasn't about just making noise. It wasn't about just being seen. Put yourself in his place. For 40 plus years, he's living a life of misery. For 40 plus years, he finds no relief. For 40 plus years, he finds no help. But thank God, one day passes by. And he meets a man that points him to Jesus. He meets a man that points him to the power of God. And brother, when God got in him, God got on him, God got all over him, and when God got in him, got on him, and got all over him, he got so full of God, he began to experience some happy bubbles. Amen. Right. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. His pop off valve came on. He had a little. I, I believe he got a, a dose of the cane helpers. I believe he got a dose. I said he got a dose. I said, when's the last time you got a dose of the can't help it in the house of God? The can't help it. I'm so saved. I'm so full of joy. I'm so revived. I love Jesus. God's been so good to me. I excuse me. I can't, whoa, I can't help it. Hey, man. Hey, man. I'm, talk, I'm, talking, I'm talking about hanging from the chandeliers, hanging from the ceiling fans. I'm talking about getting sweaty, messing your hair up, sweating plumb through your shirt. I'm talking about the can't help it. Because of the power of God. <laughs> because what God, how God affected him. That's right. The whole reason for it wasn't just making noise and making rackets. You can do that at a ball game. Right. God <laughs> done something for him. Yeah. Let me give you the last one. We're done here. Notice, we saw the, the preacher happen to him. The prayer happened to him. We saw his problem and the possibilities. We saw how the power of God changed his life and the praise that manifested in his life. And I believe when God changes your life, praise will manifest. Right, right. right. I believe when old time power affects your life, praise will manifest. I believe when Jesus lifts you up, lifts you out, changes your life, Answers your prayer, helps you in your wayward condition. I believe praise will affect your life. I believe it. Notice the purpose of it all. We read it, and I'm going to just read one verse and be done. Verse 12. The Bible said in verse 12, when Peter saw it, he answered to the people, You men of Israel, why marvel you at this? Why look you so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness we made this man to walk. The Bible said in verse in chapter four, verse eight, then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, "You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, here's our verse, and we're done." Even by Him doth this man stand before you hold. Even by Him. That's good. What's the purpose? Peter said there's one, there's one purpose in all this. There's one thing you should know about all this. The reason for all of this. The reason for the jumping. The reason for the leaping. The reason for the praising God. The reason for the temple. The reason for the prayer meeting. The reason for the preaching. The reason this man's perfectly whole, the reason this good deed's been done to this impotent man, the reason why he's healed, it's not me and John. He said there was a man. That's it. Said his name was Jesus. Said you crucified him when Pilate was willing to let him go. But he said, Be it known unto all that God raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. That's good. And by him and through him. And by His power, and through His power, this man is made whole. If the pastor wouldn't be opposed to it, I wish they'd come back saying that I have not forgotten him yet. That'd be good. He wouldn't be opposed to that. I'd like them to come back and sing that song. And while they sing that song, I want to ask you something tonight. Have you forgotten tonight, or what do you need from God? 
kind of, do you need a touch from God tonight? While they sing about what God is able to do, why don't you come get what you need? I'm going to turn this over to the invitation, turn this invitation over to the pastor. There's people here tonight that need to give their all to God. There's people here tonight that need to come down to an altar and experience the power of God. There's some of us tonight, our vision is wrapped up in our flesh. It's not wrapped up in faith. We need to come tonight and have a renewed faith, a renewed vision. And we need to expect God to do something in our life. In our husband, our wife, our children, our church, our community, our country. Our expectations been hurt. Our expectations grown cold. Our expectations gotten sour. You're right. You're our, right. our expectations become carnal. This becomes fleshly. Our, there, there's almost nothing to our expectation. Expectation anymore. And if nothing else, our expectation of what God can do, will do, and what He's able to do, and what, what we desire for Him to do, it needs revived. It needs breathed on again. It needs touched again. Amen. You obey God. While